what is going on guys it is dan here and we are back with from the depths so uh before we get started with the video i just want to uh say that i was mostly out of town for a good portion of the past week and every other time that i was back here in my uh, recording studio i was busy working at world of tanks so um yeah, I, w I would like to formally apologize for the delay in videos, but we should be getting back to a recording uh, schedule here very shortly, provided that I don't get bombarded with a bunch of schoolwork once I return tomorrow. So, uh, in today's episode, we are going to cover uh, the basics of armoring our vehicle and giving it some protection, because obviously right now, if we were to throw this up against uh, even just... Uh, a sand viper from the Dustwind Gypsies. Well, besides the fact we don't have any weapons, we don't have any armor either. And quite frankly, our AI is just sitting right there. So we are going to go over the basics of armoring the vehicle, why you should double layer armor instead of just leaving it as a single uh, beam, and uh, basically get prepared to go ahead and add in a turret. So... First things first, we're going to go to build mode, uh, put on our mirrored mode. So, to understand how uh, From the Depths does armor ratings, basically, if we can just look at it like right here, if we were to shoot a tank shell, okay, we just shoot an armor piercing shell at this uh, part of of the armor where we have two beams uh, thick. Typically speaking, uh, a metal beam has uh, a health value of 1680 and an armor value of 10. Now what happens is this beam right here provides additional armor to this one, meaning this beam up here in the front is going to be harder to destroy than if we were just to have a single beam. So the best way to make your vehicles as tough as possible is to have as much armor with very little gaps. So the more compact your vehicle, odds are the stronger it's going to be. And that's part of the reason why my first vehicle designs for the campaign were so small was because they were designed to occupy as much space as possible well, occupy as much volume as possible in a small space. So we're not really going for that this time around. We're building much bigger and just using more heavy armor. But for the purposes of this, we're going to just kind of build it larger so we have more space to fit things in. So we're going to put back on uh, mirrored mode. And we're just going to add some metal beams because, well, they're lighter than heavy armor and they they get the job done, so it's good. And we're just going to make sure that we've got an ample amount of protection from the front, especially considering our engine is right there. Siri just tried to do something for me. I don't know why. That's fun. And we're just going to run some armor here to the back. You know, we're going we're gonna to go for the overlap. So, obviously, for any tank, the armor is probably some of the most important components. Because, well, if you think about it, what point is there in having a vehicle that can't take hits? We are designing a vehicle that is meant to be up front. And, basically, uh, for the purposes of this tutorial unkillable now you do have your your spgs and all that other fun stuff uh that are not really designed to be up front mostly because they forego armor for uh guns like a better gun but for the purposes of this again we're going to go for something that we would want up in the front so what i'm currently doing is making sure that we have ample armor along the sides I typically do side skirts for the tracks just because, well, they're our tracks. If they're gone, we're not really moving anywhere. So it's usually a pretty good idea to make sure that they are protected. So we've kind of got a basic uh, hull design going on here. It's nothing like 
crazy, but it'll it'll get the job done, definitely. Now, you could just make it a single box, and more often than not, that provides much more protection. However, that isn't very, you know, aesthetically pleasing. So we are going to go for a vehicle that maybe foregoes some of the extra armor for just looking appealing because otherwise well it just won't look right so um mm, do we want to do that no i don't think we want to do that also what i typically do now this isn't something that you really have to, to do yourself uh, i try to stagger the armor so that way um the longest diagonal beams uh go on the top and then it, with each descending layer they get more and more uh extreme so here we have our one beam i mean uh, our one uh meter slope down here we have our two meter slope down and then up here we'd have like our three meter slope down which we will hopefully get to shortly and what that does is it, it just provides uh steeper angles so for instance uh, armor piercing rounds have a higher chance of just ricocheting off of the armor. Which, typically speaking, is probably a good idea. Because, well, why not have some of the opposing shells just not do anything? I mean, that's that's kind of a good, good thing. So, we're going to hopefully uh, be able to accomplish some of that with our armor design. So, we're going to go ahead and grab these... And I feel like this might actually be uh, tall enough. Because typically speaking, I don't like to make very tall tanks. They don't look very nice to me. So I prefer to avoid designing them as much as possible. Also, one thing you want to pay attention to is wherever possible. Like for instance, here we had... Um, a five, uh, five meter gap. Now you could just put down a four meter beam and then just one extra metal block, but that provides less protection than a two meter beam and a three meter beam because each of these have higher uh, health values. So it it's just little things like that that help design uh, help tank designs just a little bit more. So you want to employ those wherever possible. Now, I'm not saying that it's 100% necessary, because it's it's not really. But if you can, you probably should. So basically, all around, we have a uh, 3 meter to, in the front, probably about 5, 6 meters of armor. So this effectively from the front is going to be a very very difficult vehicle to get through now the issue is if we look at our uh, v menu our mass is now 354 i don't remember what it was previously but i do know for a fact that right now it is significantly higher than what it used to be so this will have a mostly negative effect on how our vehicle can maneuver but, again, would you rather have a vehicle that can't really move because it's too heavy, or would you rather have a vehicle that can't move because it's dead? That, that's kind of my uh, design principle whenever I'm going to building tanks. So, inside, we have roughly a 2-meter gap between the floor and the ceiling, which will allow us to hopefully fit in a reasonably... A powerful gun for the first turret we're probably going to go with um designing some sort of cram cannon just because i feel like they're the most space efficient and we don't want two of those so i'm just moving the ai forward because in this center gap area is where we're going to be fitting our turret in the next video but we're just going to kind of wrap up by um how do we want to go about doing this well, with any tank, you're really going to want to have armor. Well, not really armor, but you're going to want some sort of uh, armor casing 
to store your ammunition so it doesn't detonate and destroys your tank. So for this, we're going to go grab heavy armor from our building menu. This stuff is much stronger than the typical armor and is the reason why I use it for uh, building my uh, little bunkers where I keep the ammunition. Now, this doesn't have to be very large. As you can see here, we just have two spaces. We can, uh, yeah, we're going to make it a little bit bigger. Now, you could make it relatively small. Because we have a reasonably powerful engine, we could just have a bunch of uh, ammunition processors, which in turn will just allow us to produce a lot of, um, yeah, ammunition very quickly. But we're just going to go with the simple approach and just have some extra ammunition. Now, this little box here is basically unpenetrable if you hit it from the side and perhaps the rear to a lesser extent. From the roof, that's a different question. One of the issues that I've run into with tank designs is that the roof of the vehicle tends to be the weakest part. Now you can get around this with just making the tank taller, but then you run into the issue that you have to sacrifice your length and your width for the height because Again, we have a 2,000 uh, meters cubed volume limit. So it's kind of like deciding which would you rather have, more space inside the vehicle to build with or extra roof armor. And I typically go with the extra building space just because if I wanted to up armor from the inside, it just would make more sense that way. So this is probably a pretty good place to stop uh this isn't exactly the longest episode but it should get the job done it should explain how the uh, armor systems work in the game and how um you can go about effectively doing it and just to show uh we're gonna go ahead and um go to the front of the vehicle so like right around there and we're going to grab one of the vehicles i've been working on uh um what one do we want I guess we could use the Jagger because it's meant to be uh, armor piercing. This could be a bad example because it might punch right through it. Receiving. We're going to find out. Do I have control of the gun from in here? I don't think I do. That and the Jagger is completely facing. Oh, wait, no, the Jagger is facing the right way. Listening. All right, we're going to do it this way. We're going to hop in here. We're going to go over to the Jaeger and we're going to control it, um, hopefully, from the, the front or something. trying to do this is all right so there's a direct hit and for the most part the armor held up the shell didn't get any further than this metal beam right here so you can kind of see how the armor is very strong now again with the Jagger, we have kind of uh something super crazy here which isn't what you would typically come up against if we can actually find the ammunition creation thing which i believe is tucked back in here we have um a 250 millimeter shell with um 39.4 armor piercing value i feel like that's a li little low but um Again, that kind of explains how the armor works uh, for such a powerful shell. It's kind of, you know, pretty good that it was stopped by basically all of this armor up here in the front. Now, if you wanted to increase the, uh, the armor effectiveness, you could just add uh, heavy armor. And that would basically make the front unkillable. 
So um, I think that's basically it. Uh, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you guys liked this uh, video and you want to see more of it, uh, please like and leave a comment in the comment section down below. Uh, if you have suggestions to cover with this series, if you have something particular you want to know about, or if you just want to see um, more tutorials like this in the future, again, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Um, if you have just any questions with the topic I've covered today, comment section down below. I do my best to respond to everything that you guys leave. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Take care.